Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I want to talk about emotional addiction. Now what is that? You know, just like the ENTP personal types seem to be addicted to drugs, just kidding, INFJs seem to be addicted to emotion. And how does that manifest in the INFJ and how can you recognize that in yourself? Well, the first part of emotional addiction for an INFJ is INFJs are addicted to understanding the human condition. You are addicted to understanding the human condition. You want to understand everything that it is that people feel and experience when it comes to life. You want to understand the humanity, the tribe, the friends, your family and everyone and how they feel and why they do the way things they do and why they feel the way they do. The second part of emotional addiction is INFJs have, and this is half true, a need to control emotions. INFJs want to control and guide emotional expression in people. That means you want to help people express emotions in a healthy way. You want to give people a way to express and deal with anger and sadness and pain. And you want to find a way to help them manage their emotions. A lot of time INFJs serve as emotional guides. That means it's not about, you know, in a direct way telling people how they should feel, but rather it's about listening and observing how other people feel and how they express emotions and pointing them, nudging them softly in the right direction. The third and final point, and this is the most important one, is INFJs want to feel what other people feel. Now this is the most important one, this is the most deep one. INFJs want to feel and experience what other people feel and experience. INFJs want to understand emotions, want to feel emotions that they feel they cannot feel in themselves. The INFJ personnel type has uh, the dominant cognitive function of introverted intuition and the auxiliary supporting function of extroverted feeling. A lot of time this can drive an INFJ's uh, desire to, uh, especially when it comes to feelings, uh, to encourage and to be open to feelings and emotions in other people. That means the INFJ encourages, invites people to share and open up. And a lot of the times the things the INFJs do uh, is they deliberately work to make other people feel relaxed around them. INFJs want people to cool down, to chill and to open up to them. They want everyone around them to tell them how they feel, why they feel the way they do, and what you as an INFJ can do to help them with it. So INFJs are constantly working to invite and encourage emotional expression in other people. You could say they are like uh, supporters or uh, they, in many ways that they, uh, they, they're like firewood for people that have emotions and that need to express emotions. Uh, because people also just naturally feel they can open up around you as an INFJ. Uh, people around me can tell me amazing stories about them and how they are doing and what ha is happening in their life and what they've experienced. And, that's a superpower and that's something positive about the INFJ personality type. Now, the problem is sometimes the INFJ's emotional addiction can lead to codependency. That means a lot of time uh, the INFJ wants to be needed by other people but cannot allow other people uh, in to their own emotional domain. When you have a conscious extroverted feeling, but an unconscious introverted feeling, a lot of the time you tend to dissociate, detach from your own emotional feelings. A lot of INFJs are addicted to emotional stoicism. That means they practice this idea that they have to be the master of their own emotions. INFJs believe that you have to be the master of your own emotions. You have to understand your own emotions. You have to uh, stand above your own emotions. You have to discipline and rein in your emotions. While INFJs are capable of being very open with themselves, a lot of the time what INFJs say and how they say things is extremely deliberate. 
when INFJs choose to open up and share, a lot of the time they choose to open up and share in a way that is so composed that it doesn't feel like it's emotional expression at all. INFJs can talk about hardship and past experiences and traumas that they've had, but often they do so in a way that seems so incredibly calculated, so deliberate, so carefully put together that it sounds more like a story than it sounds like an actual uh, opening up, vulnerable sharing experience. When INFJs talk about their feelings, they want to make it clear to other people that I've already dealt with these emotions, they've already gone, uh, I'm already done with the process, I'm already taking care of it. If I'm not done with it, well, I'm working on it, so I'm gonna fix it myself, and you're not gonna need to help me, and nobody's gonna need to help me, and uh, my emotions, uh, my actual anger, my actual shame, my actual fear, those feelings are not expressed. So um, INFJs don't express emotions outwardly they rarely do and if they do they do so in a very careful and very controlled manner and a lot of time they focus only on sharing positive emotions and a lot of time they do it only uh, for the point of the other person INFJs are chameleons that means when INFJs do share and communicate emotions with others a lot of time they do it in a way that is focused on how they want to influence the other person. I'm sharing this story about my past because I want to help the other person share a story about their past or because I want the other person to feel related to and understood. So how I share about the past and what I choose to bring up is often very fragmented. It's a small aspect of my past or a very small piece of who I am that I'm choosing to share with them because I think they might connect to or relate to and like this piece. So, the INFJ personality is very polished and that can make it very hard because what INFJs fail to understand is emotions are communication. Yeah, emotions are communication. Emotions are, however, not a monologue. It's not about uh, what you receive. It's not just you that is... <laughs> and wants to feel and hear and share emotions. It is also other people. Yeah, a lot of other people are fascinated with the INFJ personality type and want to see what's happening inside. Yeah, believe it or not, there are people that want to get to know you. <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? There are people out there that want to help you. There are people out there that want to care for you. People that want to give you a hug. People that want to cry with you, for you. People that want to uh, make you happy, people out there that want to make you laugh, people that want you to feel and to feel open to share what you feel. So the main lesson INFJs have to take away from this is learning to be emotionally vulnerable. And a lot of the time, if you can learn to be more emotionally vulnerable, not just with other people, but also with yourself. A lot of the addictive qualities will disappear. Because what I've noticed is, when INFJs fail to address problems and emotions in themselves, they instead choose to address it in other people. If you feel you are not allowed to be anxious, or sad, or angry, instead, you go to comfort the other person who is angry, sad, or anxious. If you feel that you can't cry, well, then you're gonna want to uh, talk to somebody else who can cry and somebody that you can make feel better. Because a lot of time, you crave emotions in other people. You want to feel what they feel because you're not allowed to feel it in yourself. Now, when I was a teenager, I didn't even think I had feelings at all. I had gone so far in this process that I thought, I don't have emotions. I only have other people's emotions. I don't feel joy for myself. I only feel joy for other people. You know, I had that 100%. I was so deep in that, so extreme in that tendency, so deep in extroverted feeling, and so far removed from introverted feeling, that I really just saw uh, other people and what I'm learning is when I can address and go more into introverted feeling and begin to integrate that in myself, 
I can also become a lot more whole and a lot more human. I think a lot of INFJs don't want to be human. I think a lot of INFJs are addicted to the idea of just being kind of one with the universe. I am nobody. I am everything. I am connected to everyone. I have no personal identity. I am just completely at peace with the universe. I am completely connected to everything and everyone except myself. <laughs> and there's a running there. There is a wisdom there for sure. INFJs are wise. INFJs are capable of feeling incredibly connected and interconnected with the universe and with everyone around them. We feel at one with others. We care and we connect and relate to others. But that connection is not real until we can also connect with ourselves. Anyways, these were my first thoughts on emotional vulnerability and emotional addiction in INFJs. Are you an emotional addict? Do you need help? The first step is admitting you're an emotional addict. Don't say, oh, I'm not addicted to helping people. I can quit whenever I want to. No, admit when you are in the grip, when you are chasing for uh, other people's feelings, when you are chasing to be needed, and when you're forgetting to need yourself. That's the first step. Need yourself. Care for yourself. And ask for help. Because... Emotions are about communication. The core purpose of emotions is not to be a power. It's not about strength. It's not about reason. It's not about logic. Emotions are not there to be rational, composed, or carefully chosen. Emotions are not there to fuel decisions or actions. No, the primary purpose of emotion is communication with other people. When you can share emotions, you can also connect with others. And if you can't share with emotions, you cannot connect with others. That means, INFJ, if you feel alone, if you feel disconnected, it might be because you're not sharing emotions. You're not communicating your feelings. And oh, if you could do that, if you can learn to do that superpower, <laughs> go talk to an INFP, they will teach you. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Ciao.